What's up chat? My name is JMO and today I'm going to be showing y'all how to make this cool melting face transition and then also kind of some different variations that you can use on different types of clips. But let's just hop into After Effects and get started. So basically right here I have these clips here of Nardo Wick but I just call these Nardo clips. Uh... So I'm just transitioning from this clip here into this clip and Basically, what I did is I rotoscoped out both of these Nardos here on both clips. So this one right here and then also this one. As you guys can see, it's low quality because I'm rendering out in quarter quality instead of full quality. Um, I'm rendering out in quarter quality just to save me a lot of time. And then as always, man, go up and go ahead and purge your disk memory and cache before you get started. Just so After Effects runs as smooth as possible. As you can see here, these Nardos are kind of in the same little spot right here. That's because I did go ahead and keyframe in some motion right here. So it didn't look like this before. It actually looked like this. He's quite far away from the camera and then the camera pans into him. So what I did here is I just dragged this one frame over so I can see both of my Nardo clips here. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and just set some keyframes for this second one and scale him up right here just so that they're kind of like matched up just a little bit and then at the end of the clip here i'm just going to go ahead and set this i'm going to click reset and then highlight those keyframes and easy ease them like that and then as well i went ahead and did add just some slight movement to do the same so that they're lined up from the first clip so really simple then you're just going to drag this back over so that is kind of the setup for the clip and then once you set those keyframes you can duplicate your layer with control d and then delete the roto on that layer so that you have the background and repeat that with this clip right here and then i'm gonna drag this background clip down here so it's lined up with this background clip and i'm just gonna pre-compose those so i'm gonna highlight them both and do Control shift c and make sure to click these two boxes right here and click ok and then i'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that process do the same with my roto layers there is like this little black line that's over here that is a bit annoying but that's okay just ignore that for now so first off let's go ahead and rename our layers so the background layer i'll just name background and then for the top layer i'll just name roto and then for the background layer what i'll do is make this invisible for now and we're just going to worry about the top clip so we're going to be using the cc card dance effect again which is built into after effects this is probably like the third or fourth tutorial i've made with card dance i've just had a lot of fun playing with it it's kind of like an OG effect that I don't see being used anymore, but man, I really like this type of stuff. So, so I'll go ahead and add on card dance here and then set the gradient layer to the roto layer. And then in the Z position, just set that to intensity one. And that is all you really got to do. Now you just have to change the rows and columns to 300 for now. And then later on the clip, you guys can change that to something like 800 to increase the details. But yeah, man, as you can see here, as you increase or decrease this multiplier value right here, it's as easy as that. You guys can make it kind of increase like that or decrease and go backwards or forwards in this nice looking 3D space. So let's just set that to zero for now. So right here where I'm transitioning between these two Nardos, I'm going to go ahead and set the keyframe for multiplier. And then I like to make it come towards the screen. So it's going to be a negative value. And then you can just play with this until your heart is content. And then you're going to go ahead and go on the left over here and set a keyframe for zero. And then you're going to do the same over here, set a keyframe to zero, just like that. Super easy. And then if you guys want to easy ease those keyframes, click on your layer and click U on your keyboard to bring up your used keyframes and then highlight those and do F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them. Or you can right click, go to keyframe assistant and click easy ease. Uh, so super easy and then go ahead and highlight them again and this is where you can play with this little thing which is called the graph editor and it's going to bring up this thing and if you guys don't have it looking like this go down here and click on this drop down and you'll either be in the value graph which is this bad boy or you'll be in the speed graph both work both are good but i like using the speed graph so i'm just going to 
pull each of these handles by highlighting them and pulling these handles over like that to the center. And then I'll just go ahead and do that same thing right here. So it's basically gonna be really slow at first and then speed up and then speed up again and then slow down at the end. That's what that graph does right there. So after letting it render out for about 10 seconds, this is what it's gonna look like here. So as you can see, it kind of slowly goes into the animation, speeds up right in the middle and then slows back down. And then you guys can obviously move these keyframes over to wherever you want, play with that however you want. And then we'll go ahead and play with the background. So I'll just make the top roto layer invisible for now and we can play with the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and add on the built-in displacement map. You guys can use Sapphire Distort if you have that or stuff like that. But I'm just gonna be using the built-in displacement map. I think that this one is really good. And then really simple in the middle here i'll set keyframes for max horizontal and vertical displacement so at the peak of the card dance transition is also going to be the peak of the displacement map transition and i'm just gonna really crank this over kind of like that right there now you guys can do this with the horizontal that's what it looks like there and then you guys can do this also with the vertical displacement right there um i think the vertical displacement does look really cool but I'm going to be using the max horizontal. So, so I'll set this to somewhere around like 900 or 1000 or something like that. And then over here on the left, obviously, just bring that back down to zero. And same over here on the right, bring it down to zero. Same thing, click U on your keyboard to bring up the used keyframes. And go ahead and just repeat that process. So easy ease them and then crank all of these to the center like this. And then always, you know, feel free to play with the speed graph as well. It doesn't have to look just like mine. So we're gonna have something that looks like this. And this renders out almost immediately. Uh, it's really fun to play with. And then if you guys don't want these annoying black blank spaces right there, just click wrap pixels around and it'll go ahead and get rid of them for the most part. So yeah, man. And then when you have these two together, it can create this really cool looking transition. And the reason that I really like this is because it almost looks like his face is kind of splitting off into three different directions. Um, and then always what I like to do is create a new adjustment layer over here on top of everything and go ahead and add on RSMB. This is paid, this is not free, but I definitely recommend this because if I render this out in full quality and if I zoom in here, you guys can see like here's a good example right here. If I turn off motion blur, it looks like that. But if I turn on motion blur, it looks like that. So it creates this kind of artificial RSMB motion blur that looks really smooth up on there and it can really make a huge difference in really all of your clips. I, I pretty much add this onto every effect. Uh, this is not sponsored, but just, you know, super OP when you're editing. And if you guys enjoy this type of stuff, you guys will definitely enjoy the editing packs and presets that I have on my website. So definitely make sure to go check those out, man. That's the first link in the description and i do have some special promos going on right now so definitely make sure to go check that out man but i appreciate you guys for tuning in as always and have a great rest of your day peace